are hunting through uh, federally funded research grants at Rush University Med Center in Chicago. Now, during the shutdown, the doctors had to stop uh, submitting grant applications to study childhood asthma and other diseases and disorders. Hospital officials said the shutdown could have delayed further f uh, rather funding for nearly a half year. Six months. And then my personal favorite, uh, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, investigates broadcast misbehavior only if viewers or listeners complain. Well, during the shutdown, callers heard a familiar voice with a familiar ring. The FCC is closed. You know, that may not be a big deal to you, but you know, the FCC does regulate a lot of things. Thankfully, not this program. I would have been off the air after the first week. But there you go. So a few things to think about, uh, you know, regarding the government shutdown. Well, along that same line, uh, let's see if I'm still recording here, because otherwise this would be rather stupid if I'm just talking and talking into a cell phone, and uh, it's not recording anything. Okay, still recording. You know, following the deal that ended our government shutdown and raised the debt ceiling, you know, I've seen quite a few comments from people with a cynical view of the shutdown, basically uh, shrugging their shoulders and implying that nobody really noticed the government was closed to begin with. You know, sure, many Americans probably didn't feel any impact due to the government shutdown, but many others did. Not only did they feel the impact, it devastated their lives. Now, while Republicans like to use our national monuments as staging grounds for photo ops and talking points, they seem to only focus on the cheap outrage of military veterans not being able to visit sites like the uh, World War II monument. Remember Sarah Palin last week? Uh, sure, it made for great headlines, but that's all it was. Headlines. You know, that really sickens me. What they failed to mention were the lives that were devastated due to the uh, closure of our national parks and monuments. You know, those Americans whose livelihood relies on tourism to those places those families who lost out on over two weeks of revenue approaching the holiday season no less because some Republicans in Congress felt like throwing a temper tantrum over Obamacare which is still a law of the land you know well take Estes Park in Colorado for instance a community already trying to clean up from uh, terrible summer floods hit with another disastrous blow when our government was shut down a town that relies heavily on tourism and was already reeling due to the flooding, which washed away roads and drove away tourism, then had to overcome the closure of the Rocky Mountain National Park, which caused some businesses to lay off workers. Then add the fact that as the state recovers from the massive flooding, some of the government workers that needed to speed up the process weren't working because they've been furloughed. This is a story you won't see Ted Cruz talk about, because it won't get him as many headlines as showing up to a march in Washington, D.C. at a war monument. You won't see him talk about the lives in California that were impacted by the shutdown due to Yosemite be being closed. Lives that weren't even really beginning to recover from the horrific wildfires they faced just a few weeks back when they had to deal with the asinine government shutdown. People like Pamela Harris ran a local deli that counted on tourism traffic. You know, after 10 years in business, she's going out of business because of the shutdown. It was the final nail in that coffin. A shutdown Ted Cruz pushed so heavily for simply to further his political aspirations for president and pander to the Tea Party. Because he wanted to win a few straw polls and get his name, get himself some name recognition. People like uh, Ms. Harris have lost their homes and their businesses because of people like Ted Cruz. Or let's take uh, for somebody like John Anderson, a line cook at the American Indian Smithsonian Museum, who was already struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, is now living day to day after going two weeks without pay. He's not a government employee. He's a contract worker. There is no back pay for him. The 16-day sh uh, shutdown, the last two-plus weeks 
of him not working or two weeks of much needed income he'll never ever get back but that's okay house speaker john boehner really didn't want to risk losing his position as speaker of the house so he blocked the vote on the senate's clean continuing resolution and shut down the government who cares if that meant mr anderson didn't get paid for two weeks Boehner needed to pander to the Tea Party as long as possible so he could keep his job safe. Well, guess who still has his job? Who's guaranteed it? You know, that's all that matters, right? And these stories barely scratch the surface of the thousands of similar stories that could be told around this country. American lives that were devastated, my friends. Some permanently because some Republicans felt like playing partisan politics to accomplish a goal they stood absolutely no chance of accomplishing, just to derail the process. All because they can't stand the man who's in the Oval Office right now. So while I made some great headlines for right-wing media pundits to talk about the appalling act of closing war memorials to veterans, they seem to forget the stories of the lives terribly damaged because their party would rather try to burn this country to the ground just to spite President Obama and anything he supports. I hope by next November voters won't forget those stories of Estes Park in Yosemite. Already devastated by floods and wildfires and then dealt a completely unnecessary nail in the coffin from Congressional Republicans. I hope we don't forget the stories of John Anderson, Pamela Harris, and the thousands of others in similar situations whose lives have been turned upside down due to a cowardly act of political grandstanding all for a pointless government shutdown that was driven by their ignorance, their pride, and the need to pander to right-wing Tea Party extremists running their pathetic excuse of a political party. Okay. One more thing I'll talk about on this uh, Bruce Williams segment, and then I'll get on with uh, other things about this program that you need to know. Uh, NBC screwed up on Friday. I have not seen this, but I've read about seems that a report on repairs to the website for the new federal health insurance exchange is providing fodder for Fox News to continue its uh, denigration of the health care reform. Observers on all sides of the debate have acknowledged that the rollout of the Affordable Care Act, also known as the ACA or Obamacare insurance exchange, has been bumpy. You know, the website healthcare.gov, up and running since October 1st, has dealt with many glitches due to the large number of visitors to the site and other technical issues. While this fact does not uh, permit news outlets to fabricate problems, on Fox News Sunday, host Chris Wallace kicked off a discussion of the exchanges with Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida. Remember this idiot from uh, Florida who uh, was trying to rebuke uh, the president's remarks after the State of the Union a few months ago? and then couldn't even get through the speech without drinking a cup of water? Yeah, that fella. Well, the federal government website for Obamacare is once again down for repairs this weekend, but healthcare.gov was not down for the entire weekend, my friends, as Wallace suggested. It was only down for four hours on Sunday morning between 1 and 5 Eastern Time. Healthcare.gov was not down for the entire weekend. Fox Anchor's comment mirrors a misleading report from NBC that the network subsequently clarified. Seems on Friday evening's uh, newscast, NBC Nightly News misleadingly tweeted that the White House would be taking down healthcare.gov for repairs. A few hours later, NBC had to issue a clarification. Healthcare.gov would be down for maintenance only for a four-hour period in the middle of the night. NBC's initial Irresponsible report gave Fox News much needed fodder for its campaign against the ACA and more in particular President Obama's administration. Now the network has uh, cheered on glitches on the exchanges. I'm talking about Fox. Urged young adults not to gain coverage and lied about the ACA's impact on public life. And for that, they should be ashamed of themselves. Okay. Well, that takes care of... Uh, what's on my mind in terms of news for today, at least at this point. Now, granted, this is about 10 o'clock in the morning as I record this, so I have no idea what's happened for the rest of the day, obviously. 
so uh, I apologize for that, but it's necessary because I had other things I have to do today, and uh, but I wanted to get this podcast produced. All right. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and when I come back, I'll have things you need to know or things that would have been nice to know at the start of the day or just a little bit tidbits that you can pass along tomorrow, okay? So I'll have that for you next. You're listening to First Cup. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Pew, pew. Wait, wait, Mom, what? Huh? What? Hold What'd on. What'd you say? Wait a second, what? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, past bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? Uh, in the woods, just outside of town. Oh, not surprising. You've got your home. Bears have theirs. Yeah, but see, this wasn't just any bear. This bear was wearing jeans and a hat, as in a smoky bear. Jeans and a hat. That's definitely smoky. What exactly did he have to say? Well, we were about to head home, you know, after having a bonfire. Oh, I can guess where this is going. Right, right. See, Smokey told me the fire wasn't actually out. He said if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. That's true. Did you know that nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans? That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Wow, no kidding? I'm a forest ranger. We never kid. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was a joke. Oh. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome, my friends, to an uh, evening edition of First Cup, a.k.a. Second Pot Edition, for the 21st day of October, 2013. And yours truly, Joe Hafner, here back at the controls from the cozy confines of Studio 38. Yeah, we moved uh, down the hall and uh, down the block a little bit, so to speak. But Welcome back to uh, Studio 38, my friends, on this Monday evening edition of First Cup, a.k.a. Second Pot Edition. And it's time for things you need to know. Open Gangnam Style And today is Monday, October 21st, 2013 And did you know that it was Reptile Awareness Day? Well, now you do Lunch at the drive through Clean Windows According to QSR Magazine That's a trade publication for the food industry, fast food industry now, he has put together a list of 100 ways restaurants can improve their drive through experience. Some of the ideas include installing a trash can with an extended chute next to the drive through lane. Hey, not a bad idea. And letting the uh, kitchen eavesdrop on orders so the cooking crew can hear orders and speed up the process. Now, I think McDonald's already does that part. But uh, 
about this idea from uh, QSR. Uh, clean the window.